I see a shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. I'm going to go get water. There's nothing. <laughs> We're on the air. We're on the air, <laughs> Crystal. Okay. 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 <laughs> Hi, guys. So stupid. <laughs> Nice shirt, Garrett. <laughs> Thank you very it's much. So, is it so not funny. a funny shirt? Isn't it? It's a hilarious I can't, shirt. I can't read it. I don't, I don't kick... know karate, but I do oh. know crazy. <laughs> um, so we actually do not have... Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube, you're going to notice this. If you're listening on the audio, you're not going to know what I'm talking about, and you're going to wish that I didn't waste so much time talking about it. We do not have an audio intro this week because my uh, audio on my mic got like massively messed up so yeah so you'll hear you will have just heard an audio intro on thanks zach thanks zach uh, but intro. welcome to the storytelling podcast the mm. podcast that's all about fiction fiction and more fiction and telling the best truths through the medium of lies i am your host garrett robinson author of hit girls non-zombie and the touch trilogy with me today, as always, are your co-hosts, Z.C. Bolger, author of Danny Calloway and the Puzzle House, and Crystal Logothetis, pen name of V.C. Cole, author of Via Rosal, and an extremely hilarious news story, which she uh, should be publishing very shortly, which I had the great pleasure to edit. Crystal, that thing is fucking hilarious. Thank you, Garrett. I'm really excited. Um, the final stuff is being done on the cover, and it should be ready to go live on Sunday. Awesome. awesome. That's super, super cool. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, I guess it's like a new kind of like humorous fairy tale where it's just, <laughs> it's just fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah. you, you just want to slap this princess in the face. She's so <laughs> fucking dumb. Yeah, it's uh, called The Miscellaneous Adventures of Princess Leona. And Leona. I, yep. Right. And I guess it's not in any sort of genre you could categorize it under, but I guess the closest thing to it would maybe be The Princess Bride, if I could even hope to aspire to be similar to that book, because that is I know. Like, epic. I know what you mean by that, where it's like, you're like, well, what's it like? And you're like... Like, for me, last week we were talking about uh, a quest, like my big fantasy thing that I'm going to be doing. And David's like, oh, so it's your Lord of the Rings. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't e like even saying that seems yeah. pretentious and douchey to me. But you know, <laughs> it would be. <laughs> it would. Well, yeah. I mean, it's not. It's oh, not. this is basically Lord of the Rings. Right. Better. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, last week we did miss you, Crystal. But last week's Aww. episode, Zach, I've listened back to it so many times. It was so fucking awesome. Yeah, last. Week I'm so pissed. I'm like, I'm. I was hoping, like, really hoping it would be really lame and horrible, and you guys would be like, "Fuck, we're <laughs> never doing a podcast without Crystal." What do you do? You freaking <laughs> bring an awesome person into the podcast and make it better. Great. We do. Now we have to replace Zach on one of these weeks with like that like erotica writer or we, something. It doesn't have to be a replacement. <laughs> we we were going to replace you. Guest. We want guests. We no, want I want guests someone needs show. to go so that <laughs> so it she can feels be fair. better. You guys can do that <laughs> while, while I'm off writing my second book. No. No, no. no we're we need kidding, to record. We're kidding. You're both going to be gone writing no, when she's you're staying. writing. She won't be you're there. Not, you are? I'm yeah. staying. I'm not going to be going. going on the cruise. No. Not going yeah, on so the cruise. One episode without me. We'll pre-record one other one. There you go. No, I. God damn it! Or not. You should yeah, do one. I'm not the okay with the hosts being missing. <laughs> Zach, you should you should actually like uh, do your podcast from like the deck of the of the of the cruise ship where you're going to be on, so that well, see, we can see get actually, jealous. Zach and I actually both have penises, so we both care about the <laughs> fact that his internet connection would be terrible and it would be a bad listener experience. Maybe he yeah, could just be in thing. for like five minutes. I could uh, be in no. for five minutes. Yeah, yeah just, just the tip. like, hey, guys, I'm going to hello today. <laughs> just, just the tip, just for just five minutes. Just the tip. Just so we can uh, see your, your lobster red face and be jealous. Uh, you could like my... sip on a coconut. Do you notice my lobster red face right now? I was at the beach the other day, and I got super sunburned. Yeah, you're usually pretty just, white for a Miami dude. Sorry. I, I thought that was just a lighting thing because your arms are still so 
fucking ghostly pale. <laughs> I know, right? That I was like, oh, well, it just must be bad lighting on his face. But no, you do look tan or yeah. sunburned. Burnt. Sunburnt. Yeah, well, I was in the, I've been in the house for three weeks doing my book, and I was like, I need to get out. And so I was at the beach for five hours. And, you know, nice. My pacey ass skin doesn't really hold up. <laughs> uh, well, so, Garrett, um, what did you publish this week? I heard that something came out. Hit Girls Episode 3. Ooh. Yeah, Hit Girls Episode 3 came out. But, you know, if you, you should just go by the whole season if you're listening to this. How's that um, going, by the way? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I still, like I said last week, it's like the second run of the free promotional deals I think right. is going to yield a lot better results because um, Hit Girls Episode 3 will be free this weekend. So if you're listening... <laughs> If you're listening live to the YouTube, you can get it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you're listening to the audio feed, then you just missed it. So, sorry. Um, <laughs> you were talking to Dave about that last week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I remember talking. there was a point where I totally zoned out when you guys were talking about something. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Well, well done. Thanks for the no. confession. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks for being honest about that. Fuck, yeah. there's no fucking sound bites tonight because my audio is <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> oh, length Thank and God. girth. Yeah. No, but, <laughs> Thank God um, that's gone. Clean slate for me. I, I got a blurb <laughs> from uh from Johnny, Johnny B. Truen over at the uh, self publishing podcast on Hit Girls, <clears throat> and I actually kinda want to read the whole thing because it's so fucking like I got it and I was just like, This is awesome. Go for it. Read it. Um, read it, read it. It says, Hit Girls is like being punched in the face with awesome. You'll laugh, you won't cry unless you're a wuss. You'll cringe, you'll feel a little guilty enjoying yourself. I kept saying, oh, he's not going to go there. But then, of course, he did. And my faith in humanity <laughs> slipped a notch. You know, in a good way. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I fucking love that. I think you should be promoting uh, your book with the with the hashtags uh, Quentin Tarantino, but better <laughs> and like Gorier no, would be that's impossible. The and <laughs> that's the wrong thing to do. That's the wrong thing to do. Are you an that... inner serial killer? Read this. Yeah, no, but I did. Um, <laughs> uh, I was uh, I was working this weekend on a film mix, and I had the new paperback. Fuck, I don't have the paperback with me. God damn it! Oh, I actually had a question about that. But yeah, uh, well, I'll just finish <laughs> telling the story. And I, I uh, was with the producer, and I had to do some stuff on my computer, and he was basically like, you know, didn't have anything to do right that moment. So I handed him the paperback and had him read my favorite chapter in the entire season. And he just was, like, reading it, and, like, every minute or two he'd be like, huh. oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you you need to record it in audiobook. Oh, I'm going to. Yeah. That's no. gonna be amazing. In in three weeks, the paperback will be available. I just have the proof copy right now, but in three weeks the paperback will be out and then I'm gonna be doing patio books, which is uh a service where you basically record your, you you just read your own book, record it as MP3s, split it up into chapters, and then you send it to this guy, and he runs a website, totally free service. It's fucking awesome, and he uploads it, and it all goes as, a, a, as a podcast, and people can just download chapter by chapter, and you um. read it to them. It's free. It's sort of like a promotional tool. Um, so I'm going to be doing that, which I'm very excited about. That's a great That's cool. idea. You yeah. should do all the like little special effects and noises and like ah. Nope. nope. <laughs> you not have time. I have a question on your print book though. Um, yeah. What's your word count? You said it was around like seventy three thousand. Seventy uh, se about seventy five. Yeah. And you you went with uh, six by nine on the print, right? Yeah. Why did you decide to go with six by nine? Just wondering. I don't know. It's like. Uh, I don't know. It's just like, it, it, first of all, it's their most popular one. So they're like, would you like six by nine? <laughs> right. And yeah. then um, I checked a bunch of books on my shelves and the size is kind of all over the place. But the most well-designed books that I've ever seen in my life are in paperbacks six by nine. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, That's the one that's slightly bigger than A5, right? I have no idea what that is. Uh, A5 is either. Five uh, by, it's five by 6.8 or something like that. I think A5 is the standard paperback novel size. Oh, no, stand, standard, 
like like a uh, retail store is like yeah. four point seven five by seven something. I think that's oh, a yeah, five. Like six three or something. Yeah. Like the little those little yeah guys? those are little little romance novels. You know, pocketbook yeah. like romance novels, yeah. yeah, or whatever paranormal whatever or like cheesy sci-fi. Yeah. No, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of that size. Yeah, I'm me going, either. I'm going with um I went with five point oh six by seven point eight. One, I think that seems is. random. Was there a choice behind yeah, that? Yeah, I know. I'm like, what? What size is that? They usually come with a name. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a, that's actually a standard size. And, okay. Um, it's the closest that I could find that was cl- to the Harry Potter size and this other book series called uh, like the Peter and the Star Catchers series, which is another young adult okay series. But I really like the size of it because it's. It's because my my hardcover is going to be six by nine. I don't like oh. the idea of them being the same size. <laughs> really? So. That's funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, but I fucking I, I I love it, and um, I am actually going to be doing some hardcover. Uh, sorry, some paperback formatting for other authors, including the guys on the self publishing podcast. Tentatively, like uh, it, it, uh like. I don't know, just on some of their different title, titles, they need it. And they were like, do you want to like just take a crack at this? And I was like, well, fuck yeah, because it's, it's really easy once you get it, once you know what to do in Scrivener. Um, and there's, right. a, there's an article on it um, if, you, uh, if any of you listening are uh, you know, looking at producing your book as a paperback, specifically through CreateSpace. There's a fantastic article that I found on it, so I'll put that in the show notes. Um, as if I ever do show notes. Um, <laughs> but anyway, no. Once once you figure it out, it's really, really easy. At least it was really easy for me. The one thing that I'm worried about is that I'm going to get their Scrivener file and they format their book like completely different from the way that I do it, and then I'm going to have to fiddle fuck around and and figure it out. But there's that fiddle fuck again for you. Guys. I love that word. Yeah, yeah you do. <laughs> it has a nice ring. Oh, cool. Um, and then Zach, I feel like you're like right on the cusp, right? Oh, I am all over the cusp. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been. Giggity. All I've been doing is is uh, formatting basically for the hardcover and paperback, and I'm actually ready to submit. Basically, nice. I have like a couple small things to do, but I have three people that are still reading the book on a final just proof kind of thing. I'm one of them. To give me any last notes. You're one of them, yeah. Um, uh, so far, but, I'm, I'm midway through chapter two, and I found one comma. So that's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Um, and so I just want to plug those last edits in and then, and then submit it for my proof copies to get here before the... Basically, I want to have everything published before the 20th of, of uh, April. Awesome. I'm, awesome. I'm hoping for the 10th of April, so we'll see. And then we have RK coming up, dude. I'm so. We have RK coming up. I have, um, I have uh, Danny Calloway book two, which I have pretty much completely outlined, and I have all my research and everything on my computer, so that when I go off to to write the book, I don't have to have internet connection. I have um, another uh, fairy tale, a, a twist on a fairy tale that I'm going to be doing, which. I'll tell you guys off the air because it's fucking incredible, and and then I have another um, book idea that I came up with actually just last night that it, it could be a series, it could be a serial. I'm not exactly sure, but it has to do with like um, has to do with you know monsters and like Bigfoot and shit like nice. that. So. Nice. And then I I'm just gonna I'm just gonna tease this. I'm not gonna give details. I have gotten involved in another co-writing project with. Somebody, which I'm super fucking stoked about, and I I I, I, I don't want to be douchey, but I'm so excited that I didn't want to not mention anything. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell everybody as soon as I possibly can. Um, but it's it's a long serial project, and it's fuck like it's it's gonna be so. Fucking sweet! I'm midway th- like I've written I, I've I'm midway through the first episode and it's just, dude, this process. It's the same process that you and I are using, Zach, and right. it's just it's so fun to write that way, you yeah. know. So yeah, anyway, yeah, I'm excited. I'm awesome. really excited to do 
to do uh, RK because it's just it it's it's a different process than I'm used to. Right. But I'm but it's also like because I'm not having to write um, really the bulk of what's what's being put down. I. I still feel like there's a lot of production that's going on, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, dude, fucking, dude, have you have you gotten to look at anything that I have? I know that I haven't sent it back to you and been like, here, look at this, but have you peeked? Um, I started to peek and I decided not to. <laughs> okay. There's a character named Greystone who's fucking hilarious. Is that, is that the chick? No. Okay. No, that's I'm... the that's the older guy. Okay. He's so... I, I sent you a couple of quotes of his. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Favorite line in the whole book. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it'll, all, it'll all make sense one day, yeah. dear listener. Um, <laughs> all right. But not today. <laughs> yeah, not today. So we've been, uh, we've been verbally masturbating for about 15 minutes here, and I really feel like we should get uh, on topic. Uh, speaking of which, last week's was the most off-topic episode. Like, without a doubt. <laughs> that makes us great. That makes me feel better. Yeah, no, you, you keep us in line, Crystal. You're the one who makes sure that we don't <laughs> fuck around on this show. That's right. <laughs> Damn right I do. I think Dave is I just never really go off, off subject. <laughs> yeah, I think so, too. And I think on Better Off and Dead, his true nature comes out. Because on self-publishing podcast, he feels like he has to be a little bit more professional and responsible. So yeah. he's like, you know, guys, all right, we need to fucking talk about Kindle. Because that's exactly what Dave sounds like. <laughs> and then on Better Off and Dead, he's just like, you know what I hate? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, well, so, I think... I just have to mention um, Johnny B. Truant. You know, he has great books, and I'm just saying that because in his, he says that he only listens to our podcast because we talk about him sometimes, and he likes to hear that. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> Hopefully, he'll listen to this because we just I read, mentioned his name. Dude, I, I, I just read an entire fucking quote from him. Good. Well, there we go. <laughs> He's mentioned three times now in the podcast. You, you, you zoned out, didn't you, Zach? Probably. Yeah, you totally did. <laughs> okay, so tonight's subject is plot devices. When plot devices attack, that's the official uh, subject. Um, so we're we're talking about various plot devices, how to use them, and and how not to use them, and how to pronounce to Deus them, right. ex machina. Oh my God, that was hilarious! <laughs> Episode four, Crystal. I. I pulled that. It's on my iPad, and I can't play it for you. God damn Me-me. it. So pissed off. Edit it in to the audio. Yeah. So Crystal, <laughs> in episode four, tried to say Deus Ex Machina and said this. Deus Ex Machina. Any, any, yeah. Anybody, <laughs> no, anybody, watching on, anybody watching on YouTube is going to be like, said what? And anybody on the audio is going to be like, I heard that. Um, but it was <laughs> literally right, like, it was, yeah, it was. It was literally like Doug Ech Mach Was not. Maybe I had a slow connection. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was it the was European pronunciation, which is probably more accurate. So screw nope. you. <laughs> nope. I'm leaving. I'm leaving now. Clear. Bye. <laughs> She's speaking in Gaelic. Exactly. It was Gaelic. Yeah. That is word it? just kind of. It sounds like a coined word. I don't know. It's just weird. It's Gaelic? Greek. No, Greek. Ga- Gaelic is Irish or Scottish. <laughs> yeah, Ga- Gaelic is uh, the Irish uh, dialect. Dialect? Gaelic. Yeah, it's a dialect. Ga- Gaelic. Irish. It's Irish. No, it's not a dialect. It's a language. Well, it's, a fine, a language it's a language that was spoken in. You know, like it's there's Scottish Gaelic. It. There's Irish Gaelic. Well, yeah, but you know, like twelve of them. <laughs> <laughs> No, hey, hey, plot devices. <laughs> oh my God! De- so Deus Ex Machina, first of all, is not Gaelic in any way, shape, or form. It's Latin. W- wasn't saying it's it was. Greek. I've said that already. God <laughs> Greek, damn it! Greek, Latin, you froze. You froze. Same, so same you forget- got cut out at one point. Yes, oh, exactly. Oh, we're off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's Greek. It's yes. Greek. Yes. 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 And it means. God from the machine, and I we explained this in email. But in case you're not 
one of us, I'll explain. Um, it means God from the machine. And in ancient Greek theater, um, they would have the plot going along, going along, going along, and then the hero would be totally screwed. And then literally a god would come down from the sky and say, you are a valiant and honorable man, and I'm Athena, so I'm just going to save your life. And it handled all the problem. Athena killed the bad guy. The hero got to go home and live happily with his family. And it was like, oh, happy ending, yay. But it pisses combat. people off. It, right. Like, it, Plato well, got really mad. He was like, fuck this. You can't Plato? keep... Plato, Plato, yeah. <laughs> he was like, "You cannot keep, you cannot keep making shit up that go totally against the character's grain and nature just to save them and get yourself out of a hole." So he so wrote all it, about it. What it means in modern time is a just something that comes out of nowhere and handles a problem or creates a problem. Except it's more acceptable when you're creating a problem, like. All of a sudden, a, a, a bus hits the hero's wife, and the whole rest of the movie is about him dealing with the loss of his wife. It's some dramatic film or book or whatever. So that's like a bus comes out of nowhere and flattens her. But if, if he, you know, like, <laughs> okay, so imagine if in James Bond, you know, he's fighting, you know, Money Pussy or whatever, whatever the villain for that movie <laughs> is, and and he's there's this. Awesome fucking chase scene across France, and the guy's chasing him, and he jumps on the boat, and he gets in the helicopter, and he gets in the car, and da 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 da. And finally, they're on foot, and they're running. And James Bra James Bond runs across the street, and Money Pussy. <laughs> Sorry, I I, I I I don't know why I came up with that name. And Money Pussy runs across the street, and then he just gets hit by a bus. And James Bond didn't do anything. He didn't set it up so that the bus hit him. He just like he just gets hit by a bus. Oh, that would be like so you, you, anticlimactic. You'd just be like, or in t right, but you know th they do it in so many Disney movies. It's like the guy's hanging from a ledge. The villain is like stepping on his toes, and then a freaking giant eagle flies by, even though this isn't a fantasy movie, and like lays him on his back and flies off with him and rescues him. You know, it's like... Name, or whatever. A, name a movie where that happens. <laughs> okay, I just <laughs> made that up. But it happens. It freaking happens. Name the James Bond Disney. movie that happened. In no, I said Disney. No, that's what I, I was giving that as an no, example. No. I wasn't saying this happens in every James <laughs> Bond movie. Unlike Crystal. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. That, that It can also work to your benefit because if you look at, um, if you look at Mission Impossible 3, Okay, right. here's a spoiler for the end of Mission Impossible 3 for anybody that hasn't seen it. So they should pause it or whatever. Right. At the end of Mission Impossible 3, Tom Cruise, his head's about to explode or whatever that thing is stuck in his head. And Philip Seymour Hoffman is, you know, kicking his ass. And finally, Tom Cruise is like, fuck this. And he tackles him and they fall out of a door and they roll into the street. And then Philip Seymour Hoffman gets hit by a bus. Right. No, no, no. But what perfect ending happened, to me. <laughs> but what actually happened is that there was this long elaborate fight scene and in the middle of the fight scene Tom Cruise is on top of Philip Seymour Hoffman, looks up, sees the car, rolls over and throws him in front of the car. He threw him in front of the car. That's a good uh, Deus Ex Machina though. It's not it No, again. it's not a Deus it Ex is Machina. It's, no, not it's not bad, yeah, yeah. No, it Deus... was premeditated, and it makes sense, and it like you know what I mean. Right, like he like from how I remember it, it wasn't like that. But I'd have to see it again then. A Deus Ex Machina would be if Philip Seymour Hoffman was looming over him, and he was like, "Yeah, that chip in your head, that's about to blow up your entire brain, and then you're gonna die, and then I'm gonna go find you." Why? Boom! Meteor kills Seymour, Philip Seymour Hoffman, <laughs> and you're just yes. like, "What?" <laughs> Wait, but that's how Mission Impossible Four ended. <laughs> Spoiler alert! <laughs> that would actually be. I'm gonna write a fucking movie where that happens. It, but actually, that's kind of how they ended Armageddon, or something. It was some horrible like plot twist, wasn't it? I don't wasn't remember. A, wasn't no. Armageddon? It was. <laughs> Red Crystal. Planet, maybe. I don't remember. There's a movie that was like that. <laughs> They're all gonna die. The meteor is hitting Earth any oh, minute, the happening, and then like the happening, some alien uh, comes and snatches it or some shit. It's like something happened with the happening. I didn't see that. See it though. Not the happening. 
Why do we uh, have? Uh, why? Why, anyway. why do we bring up things that we don't know? Yeah. <laughs> we um, do this all the time. We did this in episode three where we were like, we were like, oh, and then at the end of this, I don't remember what movie, but it was like, oh, but then at the end of this one movie, they did this. Really? I didn't know that about that movie. Well, I actually never saw it, but and all three of us were like, all three of us were totally into it, and then all three of us were like, well, I didn't see it. I was agreeing with you. No, I was agreeing. I. As a, Okay, 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 okay. So, Usually I'm the instigator of this. Hold on, Crystal. Zach has an actual point here. <laughs> the, other, the thing is, is that it can be used. It doesn't obviously doesn't have to be for the end of a movie. It can be just something that resolves an issue. Right. For example, you know, if you haven't seen Lord of the Rings, you shouldn't be listening to our podcast. But right. at the end of Lord of the Rings, Sam and Frodo are about to get melted. And then out of nowhere, we have eagles that swoop in and put, pull them up. <laughs> but that's because Gandalf brought the eagles. But, yes. but the, right. actual, the actual deus ex machina in, in the movies, not in the... Well, anyway, whatever. The actual deus ex machina in the movies is that the eagles show up at the final battle at all. Because there isn't, there isn't an explanation. Like, Gandalf didn't summon the eagles like, like he did early. Anyway... In right, the movie, the there's no explanation for why the eagles show That's up. That's what I'm talking about. I'm, talking about, I'm right. talking about the movie. Right, right, right. And, but then, you know, Gandalf says, hey, eagles, let's go rescue Sam and Frodo. And that makes sense. But, you know, them showing up out of nowhere, that doesn't make sense. Um, right. The worst, in my opinion, deus ex machina that I've ever seen is War of the Worlds. Yeah, okay, I have... <laughs> Can you yeah. refresh my? Oh, 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 yeah. Right. So spoiler right. alert: they oh, die from the yeah. flu, right? They're like, they're like, oh, a little it turns. Bit of a, you have to give. Crystal, we need to teach you how spoiler alerts work. You need to go spoiler alert. So if you're listening and you haven't seen War of the Worlds and you care, pause. You can't just go. Spoiler alert! Blah 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 dies. You know? <laughs> okay. I don't have time to I pause it. I honestly, at this point, I think if people are still watching the podcast, they know the minute I no, open my no. mouth, they're no, they don't. <laughs> so they, no, they <laughs> don't. Dave does. Ruin you know, it. Like, and fast forwarding. <laughs> Crystal's talking. Shut off the podcast. <laughs> so yes, you are correct, though. So spoiler alert: if for War of the Worlds, we're about to spoil the ending. Again, um, the aliens die from Earthbound bacteria. And, like, the hero is, like, he's running through the whole, like, you know, he's running, uh, trying to save his family and trying to return to his wife, and he's got his kids who he's kind of estranged from, and da-da-da-da-da, and then all the aliens die because of Earthbound bacteria. And you're just like, well, that's convenient. <laughs> like, every time that you're reading or watching a movie or a book, and you say, well, that's convenient, that's a bad deus ex machina. <laughs> that's what that is. Yeah, there was, uh, when I was leaving the War of the Worlds, <laughs> the woman in front of me turns to her husband and goes, so the birds killed the aliens? <laughs> <laughs> what birds? Uh, I Is thought she it was watching Birdemic? No, because there's the, at the end of the movie, Tom Cruise points up at the aliens and there's birds sitting on top of them to show that their shields are down. And, and, so, and then the, they do that whole thing. So she's like, oh, the birds killed the... <laughs> oh, well, that's kind of silly. I thought it was quite hilarious. Now, um, okay, before we bail <clears throat> off onto the next plot device, I actually want to mention a deus ex machina that completely worked for me because it was so blatant and intentional. Um, did you guys see the movie Immortals? No. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think I have. I think so. I, I know what it is. I can't remember. Oh, I yeah, I did. It's right. the one with Greek legend or something, right? It's, it's like the gods a, and whatever. I hated right. that movie. Like oh, a guy wow. has like You're a terrible. Lady Gaga mask. What? Right? There's a guy that's fighting and then he like takes off this mask that looks like something Lady Gaga would wear because it has like sparkles on it. And then he starts like fighting. I'm not going to spoil anything. He's just, you know, typical like 300 and the gladiator and lots of swords and blood. I don't and remember. Kingdom. Are you thinking about 300? Because I don't No, remember. I'm thinking of Immortals. I, I, I've all, I, I only saw it once. I swear to God, once, it looks so like straight there's... out of Lady Gaga. He takes it off and it's sparkly. Okay, I don't remember the mask, so it, it, it could have been there. Um, I didn't mind the movie so much. I thought it was cool. Uh, I think they're doing a sequel, which I'm actually very excited about. But 
in the middle, uh, spoiler alert, uh, for the middle of the movie, it doesn't spoil the ending, in the middle of the movie, throughout the whole first part of the movie, the gods are debating, like, the gods want to go down and help the main uh, character, who's uh, Perseus or Theseus or Pericles or whatever the fuck. I think it's Perseus. Yeah. And so they want to go down and help him, and Zeus and, you know, his uh, other gods that are, like, loyal to him are like, no, we let the humans sort out their own shit. We're not going to get involved, da 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 So in the middle of the movie, Perseus gets into this fight, and he's fucked. Like, he, there's no way he can win. And I'm like, well, what the hell? They're going to have, like, some meteor fall on this guy, or, like, like some absolute deus ex machina thing is going to happen to get him out of this out of this scenario. And then a god comes down from the sky and kills all the bad guys that he's fighting. And I'm like... I see what you did there. Like, it worked for me because they'd previously established Zeus. I'm going to go help him because he's about to fucking die. It was literally a god coming from the sky and saving the main hero, but they made it work for me. Like, and, and I didn't hear anybody else complain about, like, oh, well, that was convenient. It was, but it was, ex it was explained and pre-established, and I just fucking loved that. Like, it, it was so tongue-in-cheek, like, yeah, no, you want deus ex machina? Here's your fucking deus ex machina. <laughs> right. Nobody yeah, else? Well, Nobody? I think that, I think, yeah, okay, good. No, I think that's actually, if you look at a lot of the Greek myths, I actually think that there's a lot of that throughout a lot of Greek myths. Because the gods do help, mm -hmm. they do help every now and then. I mean, even just the Battle of Troy, you know, you had the gods separated and, you know, helping out where they can and shit. Well, um, they're all related. It's disgusting. <laughs> because that's what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Incest is a terrible plot device. <laughs> um, okay, so another plot device, which doesn't come up very often, but I just wanted to bring it up for fun, mm -hmm. are shoulder angels. Basically, you have you have... It's basically conscience, and somebody you know you have a little angel that pops up on your shoulder, and right. you know you start debating with them, and it's usually an angel and a, and a devil, um, right. and you don't see it very often. That's it when they're actual like literal people, but, but the one, yeah, the one that I can think of is in Emperor's New Groove <laughs> with. <laughs> 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 the angel starts doing the one hand. Look what I can do. He's like, but what is that? No, no. He's got a point there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it, it is a way of it is a way of helping to basically uh, figure out a plot point that is it, if your plot is going you know south fast, you, can, you know it's a way of showing inner turmoil and stuff like that. Yes. They have um, that in the Moo Milk the the Moo Milk commercials too. <laughs> the Moo Milk commercials. Yeah, it's it's chocolate well, milk. What I was gonna say about that is that, like you said, it's rarely like that. You you rarely see that. You rarely see angel and devil, but oh, you yeah. do see, um, all the time. You see debates. That sort of conscience versus your bad side debate where. Right the main character or whatever character is sitting there with like their two best friends and they're like no you should totally go fuck that chick she's hot and the other guy's like no man you shouldn't do that because you're taking advantage of her and you know shit like that right exactly it's I no, mean, no, it's not like you know what i mean no it, it that's totally what it is i mean it, that those are those are your your shoulder angels. If you have a scene where you have two friends and you're in the middle of a discussion, basically of what you're supposed to be doing, and they're on either side of the debate, right? Th those are your shoulder angels. They don't have to actually be on your shoulder, right? You know, so right. that's a very good point. I can, um, but I want to bring that up, one up. That's the smallest one that I actually had here. Okay. Um, uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, no. Well, I mean, I actually wanted to. Just for anybody, I don't, I don't know if I feel like we didn't actually bring up what a plot device is. We did, you know, because I feel like we went straight into that first one. So just oh, for anybody well, that did, did miss it, point. yeah, plot device, it's basically an object or a character uh, in a story whose only purpose is to advance the plot of the story or to overcome some difficulty in the plot to fix something. Uh, 
I wouldn't necessarily say that's what a plot device is. A plot device is any tool that you use in your plot. Like anything that you any anything that you that advances your plot. Like you've got you've got characters and then you've got plot and anything that you do with your plot is a plot device. Not necessarily something that's there. Well, no, I guess you're right. I guess, I guess that's anything that's kind of a crutch. No, not necessarily, because there are proper ways to use plot devices yeah. too. I mean, yeah, you I mean, can break any down movie. any story. Right, any story plot, has plot devices. devices. Right. If you if you didn't have plot devices in a story, it there'd be no would story. Be, no, yeah, it, it would it would be right. boring and extremely <laughs> short. You know, um, your plot device could simply be, you know, something that your I mean, in every story, it's what your char- your main character, your protagonist, is going after. That could be your plot device. And right. Indiana right. Jones, the Ark cool. of the Covenant, right? Right, or the yeah. One Ring in the Lord of the Rings. The One Ring in the Lord of the Rings, exactly. That's or the one thing the Horcruxes. Right, that's one thing that bears mentioning is goals. Goals are a plot device, and if you right. if you screw up your if if you if you screw up choosing the goal for your hero, your protagonist, or your antagonist, the movie will kind of fall flat on its face. Like, okay, it's kind of a cult classic, but dude, where's my car? All he's trying to do is find his fucking car. It's like really high stakes, bro. That's you, and that's one thing. Your goal should have high stakes. Life, death, love, um, honor. The world disappearing. Well, that would be death um, <laughs> of a lot of people. Well, but, on a grand sorry. scale. Right, but, right. You know, it's, it's something serious, and high stakes is important in any story. Tr- it's tr- that's true, but even in Dude, Where's My Car? I actually have that <laughs> that noted down as a as a example. Do you that, really? Yeah, yeah. The car <laughs> would actually be considered a MacGuffin. <clears throat> yes. No, that's true. All right. Now I was going to get on to MacGuffins next. A McMuffin? Oh, MacGuffin. Let's, let's, MacGuffin. Oh, a Mac, a I swear to God, it sounded a like a McMuffin. No, all right. Now the next plot device is a McMuffin. <laughs> How McMuffins work is you give them to your screenwriter at four in the morning when he's working on his tenth draft, and it keeps him going until he finishes the goddamn script. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> what, where, where are we? Where are we? What are we talking about? Mc, no, let's uh, go into McGuffins as the next plot device. Can you I can can explain I, what a McGuffin is if you like? All right, thank you. Um, a McGuffin is a goal that your character starts this, uh, the story out with but then turns out to be a false goal. Uh, Dude, where's my car? They start out in the movie looking for his car, but then at the end, his his car is not inimical to the actual plot of the story because, spoiler alert for Dude, where's my car? And (laughs) if you care, you need to get help. They save the world from an alien invasion. So it's like the car... (laughs) Doesn't end up being important at all. Right. It's a MacGuffin. That's what a MacGuffin is. It's like, oh, I've got to get this thing. I've got to get this thing. And then at the end, it's like, you know, I learned something today. I learned that the thing that I was going for isn't really important compared to, bleh, you know, whatever lesson he learned during the whole movie. Which right. I don't think a lot yeah. of lessons were learned in Dude to My Car. Great, great example yeah. movie on that is um, it's an old movie from like the 90s, but it's called The Rat Race. It had a big cast. I don't know if right. you guys remember it. They're all Hell like, yes. they're all like after this money, they're doing some kind of contest or whatever, right, to get all this money, and then they all separately realize that there's more important things in life than money and careers and whatever. Right. right. I, I actually fucking love that movie. Yeah, it's, it's really hilarious. good. Hilarious. Um, yeah, and, and just a little bit like basically it's. The term was coined by Alfred Hitchcock. Yes. And, Hitchcock. you know, it's basically you, that thing that you're, they're going for. And it, you could switch it out for anything, basically, because it's not really important to the story. Right. You know, and, and something that we have brought up in multiple shows now, actually, is the case from Pulp Fiction. Exactly. You know, that would be uh, the MacGuffin of that movie. Or Classic have, MacGuffin. Yeah, or if you look through the Indiana Jones movies, you have the Ark, or you have right. the Village Stones in the second movie, you know, Crystal's favorite. Uh, the Grail. The Grail, the Holy Grail is actually a big MacGuffin in a lot of stories. But you I know, don't you ha- think that it's actually a MacGuffin in that film. 
I think the Holy it Grail? is the goal. But it can be like, switched out with anything. You can put anything there. It could be a water bottle. That's not what a MacGuffin is. For. A MacGuffin is a goal that turns out to be worthless in the movie. It's like, oh, my car doesn't matter anymore because aliens are invading, man. The Holy Dude. Grail never ceased to be important. You know what I mean? I I disagree. I don't. I don't like. It can still be important at the end, but it it's not important to the actual story of what's actually happening. Because well, like, let's look at Ro- like let, let's look at Citizen Kane. The the MacGuffin on that is Rosebud. It was still important at the end of the film, right? Or I don't the case. That, I don't think that Rosebud is a MacGuffin in that. Well, I it kind of is because it, if you take the story to be about the reporter, because then the reporter is like, what is Rosebud? What is Rosebud? And he never finds out, but it doesn't matter anymore because he learns so much about Citizen Kane and he explores this man's life. And he realizes that it doesn't matter what his last words were. But to me, that story is not about the reporter. The story is about Charles Foster Kane. Who, right, exactly. But, but, who, but the goals that, that he is going for his entire life, he's, he's never going for the goal of the sled. He's going for money, power, uh, money, power, fame, money, power, fame, riches, and bitches, and he gets all of that, and then it doesn't matter because he's still unhappy because he's just an asshole. But like, right? But in Indiana in Jones with the Grail, the true thing there is his father's love and him becoming, you know, closer to his father and you know keeping his true. father alive and stuff like that. That's true. He is, it is a MacGuffin in that sense. So. Anyway, um, yeah. or the rabbit's foot in MI3 was my other yes. example. Yes, that is, that is a perfect <clears throat> example. Right. The uh, red heron would be another example of a plot device, I guess, typical yes. of yes. whodunit movies and books. Right, and, and every crime drama show on TV right now. Yeah, or and ever. every single Scooby-Doo episode ever created ever. Now, let's, <laughs> Crystal, why don't you explain what a red herring is? Uh, yeah, I mean, in simple layman terms, a red herring is just basically when um, you establish the facts, usually regarding a criminal case or something like that or, uh, you know, something bad that happens, and you establish them in a way that it, they sound like they're the facts. So then now you have the audience thinking that the murderer or the criminal is a certain person when, in fact, it's he's a red herring. It, the, the murderer or the thief turns out to be somebody completely different. So what you're doing is you're distracting the audience by sending them uh, their attention to something or someone uh, as being the guilty party when, in fact, it's somebody else. That way you can sneak around at the end and surprise them. Right. right, exactly. And exactly. and to be totally honest, that kind of pisses me off. Like, I love the TV show Hawaii Five O. I don't know why I love it because it's not like yeah, it's not great television. It's just it's just entertainment. And every fucking episode is the same thing. I guess why I like it is because there's this underlying story that goes through the whole thing of him trying to find the killer of his father. But every episode, it's like, you know, Joe got murdered. Oh. His cousin came into town and then left the day after he was murdered and $50,000 were just deposited in his bank account. Let's go find the cousin. And then it's like 10 minutes of finding the cousin and then this big chase scene and, you know, he tackles him to the ground and then his cousin didn't do it. And he's right. like, yeah, the money came from, you know, my brother was involved in drug dealing. And you're like, well, you just wasted 10 minutes of my fucking episode. Right. Well, that's how, honestly, how the majority of of your mystery drama uh, TV shows are. You know, you look at Castle right. and the majority, and not all of them, because some of them are, are actually straightforward, especially if there's an actual storyline that spans multiple episodes. But the majority of the small crimes... They always have red herrings, you know, right. and and it was it was actually to yeah. the point. <laughs> and in the last couple, I haven't been able to do this, but within the first, they would always introduce you to who the real killer was within the first ten or fifteen minutes. Right. And but there, it was like just a mention of oh, this person was here. Uh, that's who it is. That's who did it. And I'd be able to call out the killer, you know, because I knew that they were going to go on a red herring. Right, so that's exactly. why it's it's not always good to do. Um, you have an, to be exam- smart about it. Right, you have to be smart about it. An example of it that some of you might know is, for example, uh, Watchmen 
at least the movie. I didn't read the 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 books, but um, in Watchmen, they are doing a red herring. Um, totally spoiler alert on that. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, spoiler alert for Watchmen. There, there is, there is a red herring because you have this guy who is actually setting up. Um, uh, who's the big blue dude? Uh, uh, Mister uh, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, Doctor Manhattan. He's setting up Doctor Manhattan. I love how you look at me, the by the way. I just have to say that. <laughs> of course, I'm looking at you. Chris was not. Gonna, Chris would only know him because there's a penis there. Oh, the guy with the dick hanging out. All right. <laughs> ah, the blue guy with the dick. <laughs> nice, nice guys. Um, but anyway, I have an he's, accent he's now too, too Garrett. Oh, you, you yes, shouldn't listen you to the last one. <laughs> oh, you re- no, you shouldn't. Actually, don't ever listen to the last episode. Wow. It gives you a, it gives you a, like a, I gave you, school, I, I, Mexican schoolgirl accent. This really <laughs> bad Mexican accent, like yeah, terrible. Not, nothing against Mexican. Apologize. She's just not Mexican. No, no, no. Was, Nor do I have an accent. <laughs> right. You, uh, right. Uh, you right. totally do. You have a what? little bit of an accent. It's not. People, it's not people that bad. think I'm from Canada or something, or from uh, from that I speak you. I could actually see that. Stupid I could see people? Canada. You're a little bit weird. Are you Canadian? That's kind of the reaction. <laughs> yeah, stupid people, like I thought. <laughs> You're weird. Um, Are you um, Canadian? Anyway, do you have any other other um, ideas or other examples of red herrings? Yes. Well, I have I have a very poignant, um, is that how you pronounce it, example of uh, not using red herring, red, red herring in an act- or a crime series, which is Monk. He actually does not, uh, you know, they don't use it that much. And I loved Monk for that reason. What the hell is Garrett doing? It's so disappointing. <laughs> uh, because it's usually each episode revolved around Monk, like having all these MacGuffins, actually, and trying to figure out how a pencil could potentially strangle a guy and blah, 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 right? Like all these weird random objects right. or, or circumstances. But they didn't necessarily use the red herring. Uh, device. So I always I loved Monk. Actually, I mean I thought it was pretty cool. On the other hand, you know you watch uh, even uh, House, and even though it's medical, they have so many red herrings. Oh well, he had a rash. Okay, so now everybody thinks it's herpes right. or something, and then next thing you know, <laughs> the rash had nothing to do with it, right? <laughs> There's a rash. Herpes <laughs> or whatever the I hell. Actually, I actually think that red herring is a subdivision of like just plot twists which is its own total s- plot device which is like you can have a plot twist where and um slight spoiler I won't tell you what it is but slight spoiler alert the entire first season of Hit Girls has a massive plot twist in in literally the last two sentences of the entire first season now I wouldn't say that it's a re- like i wouldn't say that there that it's a red herring it's a plot twist and w- the the difference for me is like red herring is it like it's that guy chase 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 catch nope it's not that guy and a plot twist is when they're going on this journey towards one goal and they discover clues that in retrospect should have indicated the actual target, uh, killer, uh, criminal, whatever. And there's all these things that in retrospect you're like, oh shit. I, now I see that it was that person all along. Whereas a red herring, it's just like mindless action chasing stuff and there's no clues, there's no hints I, layered along the way. I, I, think, I think that a red herring is uh, normally from what I see, what I consider the red herring is when the, the whatever data is given or set up that makes the audience think that something is a certain way and diverts their attention. From the and true it, aspect. From the true it. aspect. And maybe right. there's a chase scene because of that as a result. Maybe there's, you know, whatever. There's like people going to court if it's like freaking, you know. But it doesn't uh, even have to be. There doesn't even have to be any action. As long as you get your audience to be going, oh, it's this guy over exactly. here. Exactly. Then it's a red that, herring. That's a red herring to me. Yeah. Right. But if if during like like I said, it's it's a it's a subclass, and in my right. opinion, it's sort of a derogatory term. Because if the whole time they're investigating this guy, or the audience 
is is thinking, oh, it's this, oh, it's this. Like, okay, spoiler alert for The Sixth Sense, it, which like, <laughs> yeah. I feel stupid even saying that. I just want to put that on record. If you, like, it's a... Bruce Willis is a god. Right, it's like you know. He... <laughs> I love spoiling Chris. alerts. Yeah, I love spoiling them. You love spoiling <laughs> alerts. Yeah. God Almighty. Um, so there's all these clues that at the end it's like, holy crap, he was dead the whole time, and it's like, it, that's a plot twist. That's not right. That's not. A, a... That's not a red herring. Right, yeah. exactly, and yeah, so no. I I feel like red herring is a little bit more like in my at least for me it's more derogatory. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's funny now that you just I was remembering um, the Sixth Sense actually, and I think culture. This could be another topic, but cultures. Oh, I didn't spoil perceive, it for you, did you? You didn't forget the. No, end. no, 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 no. I just remembered something. Cultures perceive plot twists and significances so differently because one of the funny things about uh, the translation of Spanish of, of titles movie titles into yeah. Spanish in Spain oh, is I that they this. have they have no fucking respect for endings I mean they might as well I forget what how they called the sixth sense but it was like Bruce was Willis is a ghost <laughs> 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 like uh, there, what was that movie with Ryan Gosling I think where he keeps reliving like seven minutes Minutes of his life, he's in a train, and like you know, I just. Uh, totally it wasn't Ryan Gosling. It was. Uh, it was Jake, uh, Gyllenhaal. Jake, Gyllen Jake Hall, Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. Source code. They literally called it "reliving seven minutes of your life" or something like that. I was like, "Come on, you don't even find out until the end that that's what's happening." <laughs> all right, <laughs> so, well, on and, that one, halfway through, but I heard about that. Where like in all these European countries, they named the Sixth Sense the Ghost Detective. Uh, or the right. ghost psychologist, right. and everybody went and saw it and was like, "Well, that was a shitty movie." Like, like because <laughs> they I knew, knew all it was along. Him. Right, I knew it was yeah. him the whole time. The yeah. movie's called The Ghost Detective. What yeah. the hell? And and I mean, different values are assigned to different. I've never things. heard of this. <laughs> yeah, because in in a in a you know in China, for example, the movie Pretty Woman was like. Hookers are cheaper, so sleep with her, or something <laughs> like that. So it's like, well, that's not what the movie is about. It's a romance comedy, you know. It's not about hookers being cheaper. Yeah, than a wife. we're American and we have low standards. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you want to go for like a very clear, very unfuckupable title, if you yes, possibly can. That should like, be that should be a podcast by itself, like the the title. To, well, yeah, like. Like I'm terrified to ever put hit girls in another language. <laughs> well, luckily you have me to strike consult. women in the face by Garrett <laughs> Robbins. <laughs> very gory, uh, very gory story. In Chinese, it would be something like the very awesome gory story of two very hot killer women. Hey, or you something. Can't call the younger one hot. She's underage. Oh, is that really? Is that like a, a legal thing? No. The word hot it, is just, not allowed I mean, if you're... Oh, okay. Um, anyway. I was like, damn, getting Garrett, did you have a, did you have a red herring that you want to talk about? Or should we move on to the next one? Uh, no, I, want, I, I, I did want to move on to the next one, um, which is... Shit, there's two, and I feel I got like one that we time for one. Up. All what? right, go ahead. Really? Yeah. Uh, plot vouchers. What? Plot, oh, coupons. Yeah, or yeah, coupons. Or, or plot coupon. It's basically something that's given to your your protagonist, you know, at some point that's going to help them out of something later on in the plot. Oh, okay? yeah, yeah, yeah. So the the examples that I could think of, the main one that I could think of that was great is in the beginning, if <laughs> I fucking hate this spoiler alert thing. We should just we should figure Let's something out. Let's just spoil now. stuff. I love spoiling things. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be talking about the fifth the fifth element. In the okay. beginning of the fifth right. element, um, Corbin Dallas, our main character, pulls out a pack of matches and lights and lights a cigarette, and he has one match left. At the end of this movie, they have to have fire, and all they have, he happens to have that pack of matches in his pocket, and the entire world, the entire universe, rather, is dependent on him lighting this match and it not going out. Right. That that is a plot voucher. It gives a. It's basically getting them out of the plot. The the what where what they've gotten into the situation right. that they've gotten into. Um, I love the other that one movie, that I thought by the way. Of, 
it's a great movie. The other one I thought of was the butterfly knife in Face Off. And oh yeah. Where you have you have um, John Travolta as the bad guy gives the daughter a butterfly knife for protection against bad boys, and then at the end she ends up using it on him. Wow. Right. Whereas before he was he was holding her at gunpoint or whatever, and Nicolas Cage couldn't do anything to save her, but she happened to have this butterfly knife on her and stabbed it into his leg to get away. I did not see this movie. Uh, Garrett, I can't hear you at all. Your audio is gone. Oop, no, Garrett. Nope. Yeah. Anyway, yep. yeah, right. yeah, there we go. Um, so I, I, I have to mention this because she's, uh, number one, she's our biggest fan, and two, because she always has the best live tweets. Uh, Chrissy Moss tweeted me and uh, said, would Nikki still be underage in Japan, or would that be a <laughs> selling point? <laughs> Selling point, definitely. I see what you did there, Chrissy. Well done. Yeah, in in Japan, big selling point. Um, they'll, they'll name it Hot School Girl the, Who Kills the big People. Thing... <laughs> right, exactly. Um, the big thing that I wanted to talk about was... Okay, there, there were two. One of them is exposition, and there are, uh, which is just explaining your story through dialogue or description or whatever, but we... <clears throat> Excuse me. We already have a whole nother podcast episode slated for that. We were gonna we were already planning on doing that as its own topic because that's a massive subject. So I want to talk about killing characters as a plot device. Because that can be done correctly and it can be done really, really, really wrongly. No, yes. no agreement. No, nothing. Agree. No, yeah. I, like I, I'm struggling with a story that I'm working on because I, I want to kill the main character, and Zach won't let me. <laughs> oh, is that, very true. But it's at the end. Before. It's at the end. So I feel like you could do whatever you want at the end. Hey, it's your story, but well, <laughs> I don't personally think it works. <laughs> Now I, I see. I kind of agree with you, except that it's it's young adult. So I'm like. It's not even young adults. More not like, it's anymore. more like young like adult kids. children's. Nah. -uh. Yes, it is. Yeah. It, well, the, it's funny because it's a story that is written with adult vocabulary, but the whole premise is totally childish. So we were we were go <laughs> we were going to be co-writing it because I was going to come on and tone down her adult adult vocabulary. <laughs> okay. And then so I'm like, yeah, and then he dies, and Zach was just he looked at me horrified, like. He was like clutching his iPad to his chest, like, "Oh God, I don't think that works." <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so, so it's it it's basically it's a it's a is 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 it a kids book or is it an adult book? Honestly, I at this point it's an adult book. I don't know. I I've I've parked it. It's in the parking lot. Luckily, I'm working on a project that I can you know hack at it every single day and just produce a thousand two thousand words so right. I'm focusing on that I'm focusing on finishing up the uh, Villa Rosal so I can just go into um, the the uh, novella uh, right. sorry brain dead here um, format so anyways <laughs> yeah okay well um, I mean uh, like for me you can kill the main character at the end of the story my favorite movie where the main character dies at the end well, that's general, so fuck. <laughs> now it's like, now I don't know if it's a spoiler for you or not if you've seen it. So, um, well, <laughs> shit, I'm just going to say it. Um, spoiler alert, Blood Diamond. You guys seen that movie? Yeah. That's the one with Leo DiCaprio, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He dies yeah. at the end. That's one of my favorite movies in the last few years. Very it, good. Oh, my God. That yeah, was incredible. That was an incredible... That was an incredible story, and it to his death totally worked. And on top of that, here's another spoiler. Right next, right as that came out, he also had The Departed, which was another one that he just got, boom, and I went, what yes. the fuck? Yes, yes, I have to talk now, sorry. As opposed to fucking Titanic, when he dies for no good fucking reason, because he's I'm sitting there you. on a plank, I'm and there's you. like shit floating around everywhere, and he's like, well, I'm just going to hang on to this and die now. And it's the same guy, by the way. Leo DiCaprio. Right, right. Amazing. I, like, and that was, that was, 
I did not enjoy that. I can't say that I didn't enjoy Titanic. I'm not going to lie. I did. Like, of course you, know, you like, did. Yeah. I like, so yeah. did Zach. Everybody. Okay, good. So we're all comfortable with the fact that we enjoyed it. Some <laughs> people are like, oh, it's such a chick flick. I'm like, no, it's a fucking great movie. It is. A, I saw it seven times in theaters. <laughs> I, also, really? I, I was 13 at the time. I only saw it once, and I didn't ever want to see it again because I didn't want its awesomeness to diminish. You know? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah like, that's what it, I do with really great it's like movies. like Thundercats. It, it, was a much ah! less, it was a much less dark and depressing version of how, child, of how you know, like some people want to commit suicide when they're young because <laughs> they want to always be young and beautiful. <laughs> wow, I've never heard like of that. this, but that's horrible. Wow. <laughs> Sorry, a little bit of Dave got on to me yeah. from last week. Um, <laughs> no, but it was like I didn't ever want to see it again and be like, oh, well, that's not as good as I remember it because I just remembered it as like the greatest thing ever um but uh the the departed you can't help I, but notice yeah sorry well i was just gonna say the departed i was fine with that like they well, didn't yeah, because he's not really dying he's with his wife seven layers no, into his mind. no 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 oh, no that, that's not the departed sorry, that's not that's the departed inception. that's inception and he didn't die at all in inception oh yeah he brings her i don't remember <laughs> forgive me <laughs> um, but in the Departed, see, senior uh, moment there. It to me, the Departed is on two <laughs> sides of this track because I think it was done really well and I think it worked, but I fucking hated it. You hated the ending. I hated that he died. I hated. loved the ending because I was just like, it's because it was so abrupt, and that's why I didn't like it. It was so abrupt, and he like to me, he didn't like. It, obviously, it's realistic, but, but that's to, why. I, right, that's why you well, liked it. I understand. No, that. no. It's not realistic. That's not realistic at all. To Are you have, kidding? Uh, spoil, uh, spoiler alert. Can you alert remind again. me how no, he no, dies? No, I don't no, remember dude, it all. Don't forget. Just spoil Leo it. Go DiCaprio ahead. Leo DiCaprio doesn't die. Leo DiCaprio, Jack Nicholson, every fucking person in the movie except for Mark, Mark Wahlberg dies. Like, right. come on. That was, that was not... That, was, that wasn't realistic. That was the filmmakers going, like... All right, so you're coasting in. You're ready for your happy ending. Bam! Everybody else, everybody else was a good guy except for Martin Sheen and Mark Wahlberg. I mean, a bad guy. Sorry, everybody else was a bad guy except for Martin Sheen. Of course, they're gonna die. No, but like the the good guys too, like Leo DiCaprio. Exactly. He was he was the second good guy to die after Martin Sheen. That was that's all. Right, but then all you've got on the other side are Mark Wahlberg, Jack Nicholson. And that one other like henchman dude that Mark Wahlberg kills after Matt, he kills Matt Damon. <laughs> Matt Damon, right? Okay, so it's <laughs> the like other henchman. that random extra <laughs> right. guy, no, you no, know? No, 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 no. There was a there was a henchman at the end. That was Matt Damon. Was it really? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Everybody was dying so <laughs> fast. <laughs> You'd have to watch it again because Leo DiCaprio. To me, maybe you know that's totally fine for you to to feel that way. For me, it was so out of the blue because. He caught the bad guy. He's good. You know, the movie's dead. Boom. Walks out of the elevator, gets shot in the fucking head. It's... Right. Oh, yeah. yeah, but I was... Uh, I don't know. Just personally, I was totally fine with it. I was right. like... I was like, this is kind of awesome. Because <laughs> um, it was so fucking unexpected. But... Um, Right, no, and that's why I didn't like it. If he had done something, and maybe there was like a little tussle or something, and he ended up dying, but there was, I don't know, something that was vindicating, I would have been fine with it. But because it was so unexpected, it just threw me to, for a fucking loop. I believe in the theater when it happened, I went, fuck you, Scorsese, or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I was so pissed. <laughs> my, my worst, well, I actually have two. Well, no, 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 I have one worst Mo pointless movie death of all time. Do you remember that Nicolas Cage movie, City of Angels? Yeah. I never saw it because it was stupid. I remember. It's not that stupid. Was, it, it, it's actually, it, stupid. it's a decent Nicolas Cage movie. That, that's not an oxymoron. Um, <laughs> yes, it is. No, it is kind of, it Dude, is. it is The only non-Valley Girls kick -ass. was pretty good. Kick-Ass. Kick -ass. I'm sorry, Kick-Ass is not considered a Nicolas Cage movie to me. He's in it, sure, but you don't go, oh, Nicolas Cage, I want to go see a Nicolas Cage movie. Let's get Kick-Ass. True okay, that. Okay, fine. Yeah, 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 I, I, I see your point. But anyway. Hey, Kick-Ass 2 is coming out. It looks fucking City, City of Angels. I'm not, like, okay, fucking spoiler alert. 
Angel comes this down. This is like spoiler alert. Yeah, Angel season. comes down, jumps off a building to turn himself back into a human to be with this human woman that he's fallen in love with. Oh, I heard about this. He spends the whole movie getting with her, and then they get together, they're all happy, and then she gets hit by a fucking bus. Yeah. Truck. Something. Yeah. And I you're remember, just like... I, somebody told me about that. There was no point. There was no reason. There was. It was just like, oh... So you went through this massive journey to get this thing. We're going to hit it with a bus. <laughs> Dos Equis Machina. But <laughs> it, 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 would say. <laughs> it, it, it makes it more melodramatic, and that's what you want in romantic drama. No, Like Sweet no, November. No, no, she didn't no. have to die from cancer. She could have gotten cured. But that no, was no, like that, a central yeah. thing with her character through the whole thing. By the way, spoiler alert. Thanks, Crystal. Good to have you I back. I love spoiling um, alerts. <laughs> you, you don't. You don't. <laughs> spoiling uh, movies. You're not spoiling alerts. Right. Um, well, I, I, like, I spoil the alert that comes afterwards. Uh, but she yeah. had she had cancer the whole time. It was like yeah, but she's you knew gone. she was going to die. Yeah, you but knew she was going to die. But and no, you 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 hoped anyway. you hoped she wouldn't. In fact, you expected she wouldn't because it's a movie. But but just like just like in Ghost, just like in Ghost, you expect he comes to life somehow or wasn't really dead or something. <laughs> no, you nobody Inst expected that. Yes, they did. <laughs> and instead, I hope he comes the back best to she life. can hope for is that she makes out with Whoopi Goldberg. Okay, Maybe this is so because let me I get saw back this to what I was being, saying. But... Let me get back to what I was saying. Sweet November. He elects to be with this woman even though he knows she, or suspects she's going to die of cancer. Whether she does or not, it's fine. Nicolas Cage doesn't give up his immortality and become a human even though he knows Meg Ryan is going to be hit by a fucking bus. Well, he should have asked God before he left. He, did you see the movie? <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, he can't do that. All right. Um, so killing characters. If you're gonna do it, do it right. Uh, okay. Amen. So if you're if you're David Wright, stop listening right now. Because before we wrap up the show, I'm gonna talk about the last killing characters, which kind of worked for me. Um, actually, which really worked for me. So spoiler alert. Here we go. Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 Uh, me. Dave right now is like, oh, I'm not going to turn off. Fuck! <laughs> Harry Potter. Um, if you haven't turned it off before, you better turn it off now. Book four, Cedric Diggory. Book five, Sirius Black. Book six, Dumbledore. Book seven, Harry fucking Potter. But then he uh, comes back to life, just like does. we all expected. And I loved, I loved during that brief time period when the book had just come out and I had run it, I had read it before everybody else. I loved going up to people and saying, "Oh, dude, so you know how Dumbledore died in the last book?" Dude, she fucking killed Harry Potter in this one. And they're like, no fucking way, Garrett. Come on. And I'm like, dude, think about it. It's a build-up. Cedric Diggory, Sirius Black, Dumbledore. Who else can die but Harry Potter? And they're like, no. No, I don't fucking believe you, man. No way. <laughs> and then they go and they read it and they come back and they were like, you were right, but kind of, but not. I love giving spoilers like that yeah. that are technically true, but not really. So, but they don't ruin anything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We. In, in the, can I talk about the Hunger Games? No, we're dies really out of time. <laughs> not everyone. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> well, everybody except for Katniss and Peeta. Well, they practically die. They might as well be dead at the end. They're all like super depressed. I guess we're like, gonna talk hey. about it. I guess we're talking Spoiler about Spoiler alert. No, yeah, exactly. We, it already happened. Spoiled alert. That's my new that's my new thing. I'm just gonna say spoiled alert. I'm gonna sample I'm gonna sample. I love spoiling alerts. <laughs> no, I'm gonna create a sound effect and if anybody no, starts giving no, a fucking I no, this. no, I'm gonna create a really loud, obnoxious sound effect. And if anybody <laughs> starts giving one, I'm gonna hit it and it's gonna go spoiler alert, spoiler alert, spoiler alert. <laughs> Actually it should just be that. There you go. All right, we need to we need to wrap up. I actually have a whole another thing that I want to get into, but uh, we'll talk about it another time. Um, there is no outro music tonight because my audio is all fucked up. I love all of you hurt by the cold. So 
uh, sad and lonely too. Okay, so that's that was a bad idea. Um, you should go to our website, the storytelling pod, the storytelling podcast dot com. Leave us comments on this episode. We'd love to hear from you. Oh, I was going to mention this earlier. If you want to have us play your voicemail on the show, um, I had an idea. No, um, record your voice. You can do it on your computer. You can do it however you want on your phone. Um, you know, every iPhone comes with a voice memo app. Record your voice. Email the MP3 to info at thestorytellingpodcast.com and we will actually play your voicemails online. I'll, I'll set it up later so that you can actually call us and we'll have an answering machine and all that bullshit. But for now, you can just record your voice and email in your questions. Uh, Chrissy needs website, to become our, uh, our uh, bathtub girl. Yes, what? Chrissy, you need to be our bathtub girl. And you need to be our forced voicemail. Chrissy, if you don't send us a voicemail this week, I'm going to be very disappointed. Um. All right. It can be any audio quality. I don't care. We just want you to be the first. Hey, Gary. Um, really quickly, can you update no, no, us on our subscribers? Outro music, outro music oh, is already okay, playing. Okay. okay. Uh, my website is gbr0binson.com. Zach's is zcbolger.com. And we really have to go. We'll talk to you next week. Bye. At zc.